Yeah, I want to introduce you to my old friend Steve Gore. We've been hanging around for over three decades. And this is my friend Fred Anderson. And Fred has made bows for over 60 years. And uh, probably 3,000 bows. Easy. Easily that much. Yeah. Now our subject's going to be about broadheads. You know, there's hundreds of broadheads out there. Some are really good, and then some are not so good. And we're going to tell you about what our preference is and why we chose it. What I believe is the most important piece of equipment for big game hunting is without a doubt a sharp broadhead. It is especially important when hunting moose and elk in North America to have your broadhead penetrate deep through both lungs. Steve, this is an African Impala, and you know with hits like this, a three or four blade would really do a job on it, but I think a two blade would be even better. Well, not all animals are thin skinned, and, and this is similar to a white tail right. or a pronghorn antelope. Yeah, I see that. But I know like the big five, Cape Buffalo and elephants, it's mandatory that you use a two-blade head yeah. over there. Now, what we're talking about is what, through our experience. Right. You know, Steve, I was thinking the other day, you know, between the two of us, we have over 120 years of bow hunting experience. That's true, Fred, but most of them are your years. Hey. <laughs> no, but... Um, Wildebeest are very, very tough. That's similar, like, to a mountain goat. You yeah. know how tough a mountain goat right. is. Right. You know, Steve, I don't have to go very far to find mountain goats around it, even around where I live here. I know, that's amazing. Yeah, I really love watching them. I like the mountain goats watching them, but you see how heavy that shoulder is. Oh, yeah. I mean, to me, I wouldn't shoot them with a multi-blade head. I wouldn't even shoot them with an expanding head. No. To me, you want that penetration. Not only that, when I shoot an, okay, for 25 years, all I shot was four blade heads. I shot four blade heads with a little bleeder blade. Right. But once I started shooting two blade heads, the animals started dropping in half the distance. It's like they didn't feel them as much. So the adrenaline rush, they never got the adrenaline rush, and they just been falling down on, on the video. You watch a lot of our sportsman shows where they hit them with the two inch wide expandables. They run across the field 100 yards. Well, I remember seeing yours in, the, in uh, that antelope you got in Wyoming this year. With you, yeah. Yeah, you hit that sucker and it was almost dead on its feet. Nice buck I took here this morning. He um, he 
came in with two other bucks and uh, my shot took him pretty much in the heart. He just started moving when the arrow hit him. And um, again, he went 40 yards, which is, that's the most important thing to a traditional archer or all archers. So Fred, I looked in your archery office there and you have a bunch of heads on the wall. Sort of a casual collector, not that serious, but most of these are, uh, are fairly old broadheads. There's a couple of them up here that were made around 1910. I see uh, some are switchblades too. Oh yeah, yeah, there's about every, everybody has an idea what a broadhead is. Well, there's so many new heads now, but they're all expandables. Yeah, yeah. Now I see you have some expandables here from archery past, I would say. Yeah, this, the, nothing's new in archery. You've ever heard that said. They just, Pretty much. They just keep recycling ideas. And you know, here's a couple of uh, expandables. Now, what, what are the names of these? This one's called a Spitfire. And uh, this one's called a Star. You can, it looks like a... An Asiatic star, you know. Well, it's at least two inches wide. Oh yeah, more than that. And um, it looks a little uh, fragile. I mean, I can't see that busting through bone. And then here, this I would say has taken more big game animals than any. The bear razor heads, yeah, they're they're good. You know, when Fred Bear engineered these points. He made this razor blade thin on purpose so that if it hit a rib going in, it would, it would break off and the, and the arrow would continue on in penetration. Yeah, there's a, these are probably, you know, the most popular head ever made, these bear razor Well, heads. I would say they've killed more animals than any other broadhead. My friend Dennis uses a German Kinetics broadhead. The two blade head is one and one eighth inches wide. The Cape Buffalo, one of Africa's big five, are heavy boned and weigh over 2,000 pounds. After stalking to within 25 yards, Denny's well-placed arrow put this beautiful Cape Buffalo down quickly. All this being said, I still wonder why bull hunters are searching for larger multi-blade heads when hunting North American big game. Okay, so now, oh, once I got my burr almost started, now I can just go one stroke aside and finish it off. This will take a little bit to get used to, but you should be able to do a head in under five minutes. So now let's take this broadhead out west and see how it performs. While I am out stalking through these cattails, please take one or two minutes to subscribe to our site. This will enable Fred and I to continue our planned video series. From our experience, Fred and I believe that a two-blade head causes less trauma to the animal that it hits and they travel a shorter distance because they're down in 10 or 15 seconds. and a half hour stock and I got about 10 yards from him. He's a beautiful buck. How blessed archers are to be thrilled when we watch the beautiful flight of our arrow as it speeds toward the mark. It is a free gift that we should truly be thankful for. Oh man, right oh. in there! What a blessing it is to instruct a child in the bending of the bow. 
Then your great reward, a joyful smile after making a good shot. Good good shot. shot. Priceless. On weekends, you'll find most of my hunting companions scouting woodlots or hiking the west beautiful mountains. As we stalk past the Clear Mountain Pond, it is the hunter who sees the beaver repairing his dam. Then in spring, if we were lucky, we might find a beautiful doe nursing her fawns. Fred and I would ask you to pause a moment, take a deep breath, and thank the Lord for this beautiful country that he created for all of us to enjoy. <laughs>